It's spooky season! 100%. It's October! Yay! I feel like I have wasted it a little bit. So I'm trying to capitalize on the last two weeks of October and squeeze in at least one really big costume. Hold on, I, I think we need a slightly spookier background for this video. This year I knew that I wanted to do something kind of big and elaborate and something that had a lot of visual impact and just would look really cool. Mattel put out a series of Barbies a couple years ago for Halloween and they all have kind of a different Halloween-esque theme to them. The mistress of the manor was the Barbie that I thought most closely matched my aesthetic so I knew that that was the one that I wanted to make. And I also feel like I kind of already know how to do most of the techniques that I'm going to need to make this dress. Unfortunately I don't have anywhere to wear it this year since most events still aren't happening but I can just be fabulous at home and I think it'll be worth it. For this project I chose some inexpensive purple satin. I won't be using a pattern for the skirt since it will just be one really big gathered rectangle. I stitched four big panels together and I quickly realized that the waistband would be way too bulky if I tried to gather it, so I decided on cartridge pleats instead. Cartridge pleating is a ton of work, but I got most of it done on my way to Seattle to see some friends. The process is pretty simple. You just run two even lines of very large stitches and then pull it tight and whip stitch it to the waistband. So I bought a dagger, as one does. I'm just not sure there's really that much purpose to making your own clothing if you're not gonna have like a special pocket for your dagger. So that's my next step is to work on the dagger pocket. I wish that I had thought of it earlier because I am already done with the side seam, so I'll have to take something out and put the pocket in, but I think it'll be worth it. Okay, so I did kind of know that this would happen, but the dagger is a little bit too heavy. You can't even really tell on film, but it kind of drags on the skirt. You can kind of tell that something weird is going on with this part of the skirt. And I did anticipate this problem and just didn't really do anything about it because I was having trouble conceptualizing how I wanted to fix it, but I think I have it figured out. So what I should have done was mount the pocket to a panel and then the top of the panel goes all the way up to the top and then so the weight of the pocket and the dagger is going to be supported partially by the waist seam. After finishing up the dagger pocket, the next big step is to attach the ruffle on the bottom of the skirt. I even found out that you can actually adjust the tension on your serger to do the gathering for you, which was a huge time saver. Hooray, the skirt is actually done. I'm really excited about it. I really like how full it is. It's kind of gigantic, which is so exciting. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna need some practice with my dagger pocket. And now that the skirt's done, I still have two big pieces that I need to work on for this project. The first one is obviously the bodice and the second one is the overskirt. So I was able to find one picture of the back of this dress online, but you can see she's got these kind of like little poofy things on the back of her dress. And I thought that probably the best way to handle that would be to make it a separate overskirt, which would have been really common in different parts of the Victorian era. Not that historical accuracy is necessarily much of a concern. At this point, I am realizing that I used way too much fabric in the skirt. And even though I bought 15 yards, I'm definitely running a little short. I think I can make it work, but I'm definitely gonna have to do a little bit of piecing. I made these big rectangles. And I went ahead and lined it in the back with just some plain black. And then I also have one more layer, which is cotton organdy in the middle to give it some structure. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in half. And then I'm gonna pleat the top so that it scrunches.
For the bodice, I think I'm going to use the French Vest Bodice by Truly Victorian. I use this pattern absolutely all the time. I think it'll be a really good starting point because the only real change that I think I'm going to need to make is to add like a puffy oversleeve, which should be really, really simple. So I've made this pattern probably half a dozen times before. It should go really quickly. I think that's it. So let's get started on the next part. I did use the sleeve that it comes with, but I also added a puff sleeve over the top of it. Cotton organdy is a major workhorse in my sewing arsenal, and I used it here as well. The satin is pretty drapey, so what the cotton does is it helps support the weight of the fabric, and it makes the sleeve nice and puffy. Once I finished putting the sleeves in, it was time to start working on the buttons. At this stage, I could feel myself starting to lose steam on the project, so I took a break and then I did one big final push and got through the sleeve cuffs and a little bit of hand stitching. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot left to choose from at the Halloween store, so I found this black and white wig. I think it's probably a Cruella wig, so we're gonna do our best and try and make it work. Also, I have never styled a wig before in my life, so wish me luck. let's do some wrap up. Overall, I'd say I'm really happy with how everything turned out. I don't know that I would have chosen this project in retrospect. Just for some reason, I was having a really hard time staying motivated. And I think it might be because it's purple and I don't normally make anything in purple. This is now officially like one of two items in my closet that is purple and the other one is my Miss Langtree costume. So sure, I think I got purpled out this season. I wish that I had planned a little bit better for the wig because it looks okay on film, but there's a reason that there are no close-ups of the back of this costume and it's because the wig looks horrible from the back. I ended up having to paint my temples because the red kept showing through. As far as the actual ensemble itself, I don't know that there's really that much I would have done differently on this one. Um, the skirt is definitely more full than it needed to be, so it's a little heavier than it honestly should be, and I almost ran out of fabric. So next time, I probably would not put that much fabric into the skirt. Because it's really just a costume, I did cut some corners, like uh, the skirt is not lined or anything like that. The flat lining for the bodice is just whatever random fabric I had laying around, so part of it's red and part of it's blue. Yeah, overall, I'm really happy with everything, so hooray! I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.